Hi everyone, welcome to this edition of the Brocast where we give you bite-sized bits of best practices to help you be a better leader and a more effective communicator. I'm your host, Jarrett Bro. Earlier this week, we asked this question online, should social media be a part of your crisis communication strategy? Seems like everybody thought in some way it's useful. Here are some of the observations that you provided. Craig is a public relations professional at a school, and he says most definitely use it, and he says most of his community turns to Twitter first for information about school closings. With schools, it's going to vary. Parents probably would go more to Facebook. Students might gravitate toward Twitter, but a closed sign in Instagram could also work real well at a school. Jerry says, yes, use social media. It's one more way to protect your brand and manage your crisis. And Eric says, 100%, as with every commonly used form of communications. Good, Eric. Every form of communications, not social media alone. I always say it needs to be a part of your overall crisis communication strategy, and that strategy needs to be determined on a clear sunny day in your crisis communications plan. And I will say that in every one of these crisis communications plans that I write, and some of you know about these plans that I create in two days, a big part of this plan is having pre-written news releases with fill in the blank and multiple choice. So out of this, about 50 pages are the directions of what to do in the crisis and the other 700 pages are pre-written news releases. And the reason I recommend you have these pre-written news releases with fill in the blank and multiple choice is because you can't tweet your way out of a crisis. You can give a certain amount of notification, but you always need a more detailed statement especially one that can live on your website. And whatever you put on your website is the very same statement that you can send to all of your employees and the same statement that you can read to media if media are on site and a link on some social media site that would send people to that web page for the most accurate information. My goal is always for you to get all the information out by all of the channels as quickly as possible. Don't post something to Twitter or Facebook prematurely because that's kind of like signaling the media just like a 911 call that you have a problem. It's a real challenge these days to determine how fast you post to social media without making the crisis bigger than it needs to be. And if you use, as I have in these crisis communications plans, these pre-written templates, most of those can be up within 10 minutes on your homepage and that way your social media refers people to a more accurate statement. And of course, it always depends on the size of your staff as to how much you can do. But monitoring social media to know whether someone else has posted pictures and photographs about your incident tells you a lot about when you need to post to social media so that you can control the flow of accurate information before the rumors spread. Thanks for your participation in this discussion this week. The discussion isn't over. You can still go online to our Facebook page, to our Twitter page, and to LinkedIn, and still provide some additional thoughts and observations to what your colleagues said, as well as to the observations I just gave you. Here on the broadcast, we ask a fresh question every week with observations on Friday. So we will see you next week with a fresh question for the broadcast. This is Jared Brough.